Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating looping animated pipes in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get access to over 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project and when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got three CG Shortcuts courses on there now, with new courses being released regularly, covering a bunch of stuff we don't usually go into on YouTube. So if you want to test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that will give you access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, here we are in Cinema 4D. And the first thing we wanna do is come up here to the render settings. We wanna change this to 1920 by 1080. And we want 24 frames per second for the frame rate. Then we'll close that and hit Control D on the keyboard to bring up the project settings. And we just wanna make sure our frames per second matches here. So we want that to be 24 as well. We also want to create a looping animation that loops every five seconds. So let's come down here and we'll type 24 as in 24 frames a second times five. And now we've got 120 frames and we're ready to get started. So the first thing we want to do is draw out a spline for our pipe to follow. So we'll come up here and grab our pen tool and we can probably do this a bit easier if we turn on our snapping. So let's click here and enable snap. Then we'll click again and we'll turn on work plane snap. And we'll go in there one more time and turn on the grid point snap. And rather than drawing it in our perspective view, let's middle mouse click to bring up all of our different views. And it's probably easiest if we start drawing this over in the front view. So we'll click our middle mouse button again to go into that window. And now that we've got our snapping on, You'll notice when we hover over the grid, our cursor is sticking to the grid points. So this should make drawing this out nice and easy. So let's give it a go. I'll start by putting a point down here, then maybe one up here. Then we could go over here, maybe one down here. And then if we switch to the top view, we can have this going back in the Z direction. The shape you make here is entirely up to you. You can have it as complex as you like, but we're just going to keep it nice and simple. You just want to make sure that you keep enough space between these lines so that they don't overlap each other. And judging by the perspective view, I think we're just about done here. Let's just go to our front view and we'll add one final point down here. Okay, let's switch back to our move tool and we'll go back to our perspective view. And there's our very basic pipe shape. And we might just turn the scene grid off now so we can see this a bit better. We'll come up to filter and just untick grid. Okay, so we can change these points if we like, as long as the point selection mode is activated up here. Let's maybe move this guy down a little bit further. And I think that will do us for now. Feel free to create any shape you like. The next thing we wanna do is create the tubing to go around our pipe shape here. So we'll come up here and we're going to use the tube, which comes in pretty massive to begin with. So the first thing we wanna do is scale this down so let's go and tweak the outer radius, something like that. Although we might just make this an even 25. And I think our tube's a bit too thin. So we'll tweak the inner radius as well. Maybe try 19, something like that. And now we want a whole bunch of these guys. So with it selected, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in a cloner. Don't forget to hold Alt so it's automatically applied. And you can see up here, it's become a child and we're getting our clones going up in the Y direction, which is actually exactly what we want. We can come down to our Y value here and change how those are offset from each other. We can also bring up the count here. So we've got a whole bunch of these. And if you wanted to get rid of the gap in between each one of these clones, we just need to figure out how tall our tube is. So if we grab it, you can see the height is hundred centimeters. So if we go back to our cloner, we want the value in the Y direction here to match. So we'll make that 100. And now those are fitting together perfectly. And we can check that if we come up to display and turn the lines on. And there you go. I think I actually do prefer it with a bit of a gap in here. So let's just bring that up. 
And it might be easier to see if we turn those lines off again. There's a little bit of a gap. Let's bring this up a little bit more. Okay, about 103, it looks pretty good. So the next thing we wanna do is alternate the colors on here. So let's come down here and double click in our material palette to create a new material. And we'll give that guy a nice reddish color. Then we'll do the same again, but this guy will make a bluish color. And one more, this guy can be a bit of a yellowy color. And then we'll come up and grab our tube and holding control, we'll drag it out here to create a duplicate. And we want three of these all up. Then we'll apply each of these colors to each of our tubes like so. And now we've got our alternating colors and materials. So the next step is to wrap this guy along our spline. And we can do that up here with a deformer called the spline wrap. And bringing that in gives you this yellow box. It's actually asking for a spline to wrap to. We just so happen to have a spline, so let's grab that and plonk that in here. And now we need to tell it what to wrap to our spline. So that's going to be our cloner. And we need to do this in a particular order. So with our cloner selected, we'll hit Alt G on the keyboard to group it. And we can rename that null to something like pipes. Then if we open that and just close that one, we need to put that spline wrap between the pipes null and our cloner like this, which gives us a pretty crazy result at first, but that's just because our axis is set incorrectly. We just need to cycle through these until it starts looking right. All right, positive Y is looking good. If we zoom in a tad, you can see that's wrapping along our spline quite nicely now. And it's finally starting to look like some pipes, but we might wanna round these edges out a little bit. So we can probably start by fixing our spline. Let's just hide this for a second. If we grab that guy, we need to figure out a way to round off these pointy edges. So with our point mode selected, we can hit Control A on the keyboard to select all the points. Then if we right click, we have an option down here called chamfer, which is going to allow us to round off those corners. And to do that, we just need to click and drag anywhere away from our object here. And you can see how those corners are subdividing and smoothing out. Let's just undo that. This might be a bit easier to see with our pipes on again. Now, if we click and drag to chamfer again, you can see we are getting these rounded edges, but our pipes are still looking pretty chunky. And that's because we probably don't have enough geometry in here. So we'll undo that and we'll come back up here and turn the lines back on. And you can see we don't have any subdivisions going this way. So our tubes are unable to deform around that corner. But that's an easy fix. Let's just come over and grab our tubes. Then down here under height segments, we need to bring this way up. And as we do, you can see that extra geometry in there allows us to hug those corners a bit tighter. So let's try a value of about 30 and hopefully that will give us a nice smooth result. So we'll go back to our spline and we'll right click again and make sure we've got chamfer selected. Now, if we click and drag, we can get those nice smooth rounded corners. And now our pipes are starting to come together. We probably don't need those lines on anymore. So let's come back up to display and switch those off. And you might remember from our example, we actually had all of these pipe segments at different sizes. So how do we go about doing that? If we were to just grab these tubes and resize them, let's try making the height of that one 50 and we'll grab the next one here and we'll make that 20. We've now got all these big gaps in here. And if we try to fix that by maybe going to the cloner and just bringing up the count. They come closer, but we can never quite fill these gaps up. So let's undo that. We need to find a way to stack these all up closer together. If we turn that spline wrap off, you can see that our clones aren't even coming close to each other here. But lucky for us, someone's figured out exactly how to fix this with a nifty bit of Python code. If you go to atortu.com forward slash pileup effector, you can get this awesome Python script by Artu Rocho, and I'm sure my pronunciation is way off there, so sorry to everyone in Finland. But nonetheless, Artu has made an amazing script that you can download for free, and basically it lets you stack all your clones together. So download the Cinema 4D file, and you'll find the Python code as an object inside it. And while you're here, make sure you check out his other posts. He's got loads more cool stuff you can download, and he's also got some amazing work on here. 
so check it out and I'll see you back in Cinema 4D. Okay, so I brought that pile up script into our scene here. Now we just need to apply it to our cloner. And we do that exactly the same way we would with a normal MoGraph effector. If we click on our cloner and go to the effectors tab, we just need to drag it into here. So we'll grab that and plonk him into here. And now all of our clones are stacking up nicely. Let's go and take a little look at our pile up script here. You can see it's working straight away because we've got the axis set to Y here. But we've also got options for the X axis or the Z axis if you wanted to stack them in a different direction. But obviously we want ours going up here. So we'll leave that on Y. And if we want a bit of a gap between each one of these, we've got the option down here. So let's just maybe set that to three. And we'll zoom in and I think that's looking pretty good. We could probably fill at the edges of our tubes here to make them look a little bit more interesting. So we'll grab all of those and we'll come down here and switch this on. Then we'll try one segment and one for the radius. And if we zoom in, that might be a little bit too big. Maybe we'll bring that radius down to 0.5. Okay, I'm happy with that. So next we need to wrap this back around our spline here. So we can go and turn our spline wrap back on. And that's starting to look pretty cool, but we might just tighten those gaps up a little bit. If we go back here, let's bring that down to maybe one. Okay, so the next step is to animate this. And to do that, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in a shader effector. And we'll use our shader effector to drive the scale of our tubes so they can stretch out along our spline. But first, we actually have to apply it to our cloner. If we grab this guy, you can see we only have the pile up in our effectors list here. So we need to grab that and we'll bring it down here where we actually need it to affect our cloner before the pile up. So we need to put it in at the top. And that way our animation will be affected by the pile up as well. And you can see we're already getting some scaling happening in here. And that's because if we go back to our shader, we've already got some scaling values in here. But rather than scaling uniformly, we actually only want to scale these in the Y direction so they stretch out. So let's untick the uniform scale and we'll just bring up the Y value here. Let's just try a value of three. And so they're not so spread out here. Let's go back to our cloner and we'll turn up the count so we can bring in some more clones. Let's try 80. Okay, that's looking good. So now we can animate this. So we'll go back to our shader effector and under the shading tab, we're going to drive this animation with some noise. So we'll click here and grab a noise. Then we'll go into our noise and there's plenty of settings you can change here, but the ones we're most concerned about is the animation speed and the loop period. So we'll start by turning the animation speed up. Let's just try that at one for now. And if we give that a play, there's our animation. But you'll notice when it gets to the end, we get a bit of a jump. We need our animation to loop at that point, so we need to adjust the loop period. If you remember, we have 120 frames here, which is five seconds at 24 frames a second. So we need to tell it how many seconds we want the loop to be. So we'll put a five into the loop period. And now if we play that back, our animation carries on. And when we get to the end, it starts looping. And that's really the basics of this effect. There's a few more things we could do to spruce this up. Firstly, we could extend our pipes all the way along this spline because right now it's ending over here. So to fix that, we'll go up to the cloner and all we need to do is just tweak the Y axis here and that should sort things out. Let's give that a play and we'll just change the camera view here. And that seems to have fixed that. So we could make this a little bit more interesting by having our tube scale in all directions. So if we go back to our shader effector and back down here, if we put a value in the X axis and we'll have to do the Z axis as well so these don't squish up like that. So we'll put a one in there as well. And now if we play that back. And I think that's looking a bit more interesting. This is the look I went with in my final render. Another thing I decided to do was that I wasn't too happy with the purple, red, yellow repeating pattern. And you can make this a lot more random. If we go back to the cloner, we can change the clones mode here from iterate to random. 
And now we're getting some of these clumping up and it just looks a bit more interesting. And if you're thinking there's too many blue ones or red ones together, we can always come back over here and play with the seed value. If we just cycle through this, we can keep going until we get a look that we're happy with. Something like that. And we're also not just limited to using tubes in here. We can actually use any object we want. If we come up here and bring in something like a torus, then if we scale that guy down a bit, about there, and move that into the mix here. And although it's been a bit squished there, we now have it cloning along with the rest of our pipe. And we can just scale that down a bit, something like that. That's looking cool. And we could even give it its own color. If we make another material here, let's make this guy a nice bright green and apply that to our torus. We can quickly and easily integrate that into our animation. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And if you wanna get hold of the Octane Render Ready project file so you can see exactly how I set up my final render, you can grab that from our Patreon page. Okay, so before we wrap things up, it's time to reveal our next monthly art challenge. This month, we have some epic new prizes to give away to our winners, including Render Farm credits from Drop and Render for use in Cinema 4D. These guys give you lightning fast renders and support pretty much every plugin out there, as well as CPU and GPU rendering. So this is huge. Winners will also receive subscriptions to the Quixel Megascans online library of 4K materials and 3D scanned models. These subscriptions also give you access to the Quixel ecosystem, which includes Quixel Bridge and Quixel Mixer. So you'll be able to take your renders to the next level. So to be eligible to win all this great stuff, you just need to create an artwork that features this month's mystery object. And our mystery object for September is an umbrella. So make sure your renders and CG creations feature an umbrella. And you're in for a chance to win. Don't forget the judges are looking for the most creative use of the mystery object, along with technical skill and overall creativity. You can get full details at cgshortcuts.com forward slash umbrella. And don't forget to join our Facebook group for regular updates and to enter. The challenge officially starts on the 1st of September, but you guys get a little head start. Just make sure your entry is tagged hashtag CG shortcuts and hashtag umbrella and that you submit by the 25th of September. Good luck and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.